Wow, look at these incredible creatures. Did you know it is easy to attract moths if you have the correct type of lighting? Important is that you use a lamp that emits a lot of UV spectrum light, such as a mercury vapor light bulb or blue or ultraviolet spectrum LED lights. If you have the specific and correct type of lamp, hundreds of moths will be attracted to your light source, allowing you to study them up close. And that is what I am doing today. In fact, believe it or not, this is my work. Yes, it's true. I, Bart Coppens, study moths for a living. I have a dream job. I study insects in the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil. The information and pictures and videos that I collect will help their conservation and help me educate people about these important creatures online. I am also the owner of a YouTube channel and on my channel we document and talk about insects. It's always unpredictable what we are going to catch though, the species that can show up are a little bit random. Today I am going to trap moths, not just for one but for two full days. Yes, two moth trapping nights in one video, let's get started! Yeah, there's a handful. This is your favorite online entomologist, Bart Coppens, and welcome to another one of my videos. Where do I get the energy? I've already made over a thousand videos and I just keep going, eh? So today I made myself an insect trap. This light here is a special light bulb, a mercury vapor lamp with a white sheet. And the white sheet will attract insects. <laughs> now I am a person that um, loves observing and studying insects. It's what my whole YouTube channel is about. And I'm hoping this light will get a selection of cool species of moth. So that's what I'm really anticipating here tonight. We are really quite high altitudes today. It's uh, even so cold I have to wear a vest. This is a high altitude mountain, it's cold. Um, well, we may get some different result because of that. Let's check it out. I did in fact already get one awesome species of moth. I've put it here in a cage so I can make a close-up of it. Let me take it indoors so we can take a close-up. Now here in Brazil I'm doing uh, my insect stuff in an uh, interesting place. There's this very cute cottage here. It looks almost German, don't you guys think? It's not what you expect in Brazil, yet here we are. So if the moths are interesting, I will place them here. So people, here's how it works. If I see a moth that I find interesting, I place it on a special background in which you can see its size. It's basically a cutting board. If you guys see people take pictures of moths on cutting boards, I'm the person who started that trend. This is a light ring. 
is going to give me special lighting. And then here's a camera, Lumix FC2000, and I can use it like to make pictures. That's what I do. So right now I found these pieces of moth, a Mania Lunis, and if you guys don't know what it is, I'll show you in a second. We have to be gentle, because this moth will go absolutely wild and crazy, probably, if handled. So, this is going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. Moths are not the most cooperative animals in the world. Here it is, very large. Now, oh, it's already flying a little. But it's sitting still here on the background, that's fantastic. There is also a second smaller moth here flying around. Uh, that one is not important. Oh. So now the difficult part is trying to coax the moth. Yeah, it's sitting. Oh god, it's flying. Okay, let me show you the close-up, okay? So this is going to take a few minutes. Let me show you the close-up. Wow, do you like these pieces of butterfly? Yes? Then you have been fooled because this insect is a moth. This is Bart Coppens. I'm studying insects in the Brazilian Atlantic rainforest and I came across this species today. Sematura lunis or Mania lunis is a species of moth from a family of moths that's pretty hipster, the Sematuridae. You probably don't hear about this family of moths very often. Let me tell you more about this amazing insect and its biology today on YouTube. Wow, so beautiful, fascinating. Wow, what is this? Is it a swallowtail butterfly? Nope, it's a moth. This is the forest spirit moth. It is a Sematuridae species. A moth family that we have not seen on my channel before. The species is Mania lunis. And the species Mania lunis is found all the way from Mexico down to Brazil. The larvae of Mania lunis were reared in Costa Rica for the first time in 2001. And the host plants recorded were Pentracletra macrolobra from the Fabaceae family and Cisigium longifolium from the Myrtaceae family. These moths are not rare, but they definitely don't show up every night. That makes it a good surprise. The species has gorgeous long tails on its hind wings and almost look like a butterfly. So this is the first big moth we managed to catch tonight. I suppose we are off to a fantastic start of the night. Isn't it? I always wanted to see this moth alive and tell you about it on YouTube. And finally I found it in Brazil. That's fantastic. So, this is why I need to travel people. I've always said this, I always wanted to travel the world with my channel to show my viewers cool insects all around the world. And it's finally happening. So, while the trap outdoor is attracting more interesting insects, want to take a look outdoors here in the darkness? Maybe we'll see some cool stuff in the dark.
All right, the insect trap is attracting a diversity of uh, insects. We're gonna let it do its job. But instead, I'm going to use my torch and walk here in the dark. See if we can find anything spooky, something terrifying, something scary here at night in the forest. Who knows? Okay, that was enough. I'm already tired. Let's just stay at the moth trap instead and take some insects and digitalize them for you. Let me show you some of the moths I found. Oh my gosh. This moth right here is just utterly fantastic. It's a species of tiger moth. Looks like a hypercompa. Oh my god, the color. Oh my god. This is so beautiful. I'm so happy right now. Look at this explosion of magnificence of color. What a fantastic animal this is. Wow, I love tiger moth. It's so beautiful, dude. I'm blown away. <gasps> Did you see that colorful abdomen? Oh my god, it's so beautiful, dude. This is just fantastic. Wow, wow, wow. Look at it. <laughs> There's nothing in my life that makes me happy like moths do. Man. Wow. Some moths are just extraordinarily nice. And they do it, do it just to show off, just to flex. Look at the red body. Now, the cool thing about tiger moth is they are often toxic. Now, me holding it is not dangerous. It's only toxic if you eat it and swallow it, okay? It's more like poisonous, okay? So that's why they have these bright colors. It's basically a signal to birds and other animals that consider eating it as a as this lunch. It means don't eat me. I am poisonous. Wow, what is this super amazing tiger moth species? It's Phaegoptera depicta, and it's one of the most beautiful species of tiger moth that I have seen all my life. Absolutely incredible. It has a milky white color with beautiful yellow spots, and blue glitter-like scaling and a bright red abdomen. This species is found in Brazil, in higher altitude habitat with good quality forest where it seems common. Interestingly, despite the fact this moth is very big, very colorful and very noticeable, it seems that very little is known about this creature. The life cycle and food plants seem to be rather unknown. Now that's a shame. Fantastic, just look at this tiger moth. It's absolutely beautiful. This one deserves its own video on my channel. Oh wow, this is another Phaegoptera species. It looks like the orange version of the previous moth species that I just showed you. They're pretty much sister species. This moth is found in the Sao Paulo province of Brazil. Despite the fact this moth is also large and colorful, pretty much nothing seems to be known about its life cycle. That's crazy. And this is why I came to Brazil. To collect more information about these animals, which will benefit their conservation. To put it simply, you cannot conserve koalas without conserving eucalyptus. And you cannot conserve pandas without conserving the bamboo that they eat. And you can't conserve butterflies and moths without knowing the plants the caterpillars like to eat. 
By investigating these local species, me and my channel are contribut contributing to science and to the protection and conservation of these animals in Brazil. I want to find out some of the life cycles of these local animals. It's crazy how many insects there are in the rainforest, of which we pretty much know nothing at all. Hmm. This is a Saturnid moth from a very special subfamily, the Oxytanidae. Interestingly, some scientists are still debating if the Oxytanidae deserve to be their own family, that are separate from Saturnidae. They are just that different from any other Saturnidae. Most species of Oxytanus feed on Rubiacea family plants in the wild. The caterpillars eat coffee plant in some instances, but it seems that the life cycle of this one, as far as I know, is unknown to science. Now this just illustrates how many species of moths there are in the rainforest, of which we know and understand very little. Despite that, it is interesting to see Oxytanus in the wild. Bro, Arostelia! Hey yo, it's a species I raised in the Netherlands before, but not I found in the wild, yeah! Arostelia! Eh, I should probably take my net, eh? Before it flies away. It's good. What's Celia? Oh. Dang it. Oh, here is Celia. Yes. Gotcha. Ah, fantastic. Ah, beautiful. This is why you guys keep coming to my channel. Stuff like this, people. That's what I want to show you. Fantastic. Awesome species of Rotsilia. Wow. And I just found it right here in Brazil, in the Atlantic rainforest. And it appears to be in perfect condition. That's rare. Most of the Rotsilia I find have at least some small pieces whizzing, missing from their wing. But this one just have a totally perfect Almost a one condition. Look at that. That's fantastic. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love these moths. Oh, look. It's Rostelia jacobea. This species I've raised in the Netherlands years ago. In the wild, this silt moth is found in Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, Uruguay and Paraguay. It seems this species likes to hang out on higher altitudes. In Europe, this species is commonly raised by hobbyists like me. We just keep finding cool new silk moths that we haven't seen before in the wild, don't we? And it's thanks to all of you, my viewers. My YouTube channel is completely demonetized by YouTube and I don't make any money for my videos. Only the donations from my fans and viewers made it possible for me to travel to Brazil and document insects. If you like my show, consider tipping or donating too. It's the only way I can travel and film more moths for you. Brazil is a paradise for silk moths. It has over 220 species of Saturnidae. The larvae feed on plants of samphoral families, including species of Ilex such as Ilex paraguayensis, Jacaranda caroba, Jacaranda mimosifolia and Cephalanthus glabratus, which are some of its host plants in the wild.
Huh? This is unusual. This right here is a moth from the Teridae family. This fascinating family of moths have a lot of variety in their morphology. Sometimes I even confuse them with loopers or owlet moths. This seems to be the species Rhodonura nebulosa. People have found this species at least in Brazil and Ecuador it seems. It has an interesting tibial spines and quite the attitude. The way this moth folds its wings around itself almost reminds me of somebody wearing a cape, a quite charismatic and beautifully patterned animal. Entomology with moths is long and tedious work, people. You work long nights. That's for sure. Just ask any other, other entomologist. And you need a lot of coffee, man. And here, look. It's coffee. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. This keeps me awake. This keeps me awake. Oh, I leak. I leak so bad in this angle. You know those angles in which you just look so ugly. I mean, I always look ugly, but I look extra ugly in that angle. So let's get some sugar. The coffee. There you go. Some milk. Yep. <sighs> Being an entomologist, it is hard to work, folks. Yeah, you're, you're, usually I'm up all night and uh, I sleep around 5 o'clock. I don't like to sleep very much when I'm uh, tra attracting insects with light because some of the moths, they come to the light and leave in a few hours. And if you're sleeping, you just you just may, may miss something that's rare, you know? I don't want to miss anything that's rare. I'm a bit paranoid about that. Moth trapping is really fun. And I wonder, why haven't I done this before? Why haven't I done this earlier in my life, you know? I'm starting to think, you know, in my home country, the Netherlands, where I'm from, why am I not moth trapping there? Why don't I have moth trapping equipment in the Netherlands, huh? Then I could make videos like this too. Now, of course, my home country, the Netherlands, it doesn't have huge, big Saturnid moth like the giant silk moth or the awesome moth that with tails that we just saw. But I think my country, the Netherlands, have some very interesting and rare species of moth that are beautiful and also worth a video, 
even if they're not big tropical insects, you know, they're small. Um, the moths from my country are modest, they're small. We do have like 18 species of hog moth in the Netherlands. I'm thinking maybe when I go back to the Netherlands, to my own country, maybe I should buy equipment to do this stuff so I can make, keep making videos like this, you know, and uh, just see what shows up. Now for those who are confused, currently I am in Brazil. I said it before, but uh, I was talking about my home country. I went from the Netherlands all the way to Brazil to the Atlantic rainforest to study insects here, you know. Insects here need a little bit of studying because they are declining, unfortunately. The fauna here is, uh, due to deforestation, very much declining, sadly. So it needs to have a good look. It deserves to have some attention on YouTube, some awareness. Yeah. How I'm hoping to be the person who does that. I like to moth trap more. It would be fun to do something like this also like in the United States. I would like to go to the United States and get like wild luna moth, wild robin moth, polyphemus moth, stuff like that. Or, or like go to Australia and find the Hercules moth, you know. Or maybe Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. There's so many places in the world where you can do this and get some of the world's most amazing and rare moths. Yeah, it's fun. Anyway. Mm. Let's see what shows up. Hmm? Oh, a small little Automerus moth. How cute. I know you guys are fans of Automerus. And this one I found in Brazil while studying insects in the rainforest. Let me tell you more. Hey, this one is new for my channel. This small species of Automerus is one I have not filmed before. Meet Automerus basalis. This species is found on mid and high level elevation from 300 meters up to 1500 meters in the mountains. In the wild it mainly seems to feed on bamboo. But the caterpillars have also been recorded on leguminose plants such as acacia and robinia. It seems that bamboo however is their favorite and primary food plant in the wild. This species is found in Paraguay, Brazil and Argentina. They seem to have two to three roots a year. Their size is on the smaller side for an Automerus. Their color, however, is really beautiful. It is gray with nice yellow contrast and two huge eye spots meant to intimidate their enemies. Is it working yet? Are you scared? I sure am. Hmm, yes. Moths. Hmm, yes, moths. Hmm, yes, moths. Hmm. Yes, moths. This here, my friends, is a Lacio Campidae. I think it's from the genus Euglyphus, but I am not sure yet. I still have to identify it down to a species level. If you recognize the species, then please leave a comment. It would be greatly helpful to my research if I can identify the species. Aha! I just found this one, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this thing, it looks like a leaf, but it's actually a very special little Saturnid moth. And today I want to talk to you about it. Hmm, what could it be? I think it's time for me to spoil the secret. It's fantastic though. This silk moth is identified by me as Lonomia antoniae. Almost nothing is known about this species of moth. 
Not the caterpillars, not the life cycle, not the fly time, and not even its distribution. Almost nothing. In fact, this species was recently described in 2015 based on molecular analysis. But even that status is questionable, maybe. What I can tell you though is that Lonomia is a genus of silt moths with ferociously venomous caterpillars. Touching them is um, said to result in pain or see even death in some cases. However, not all species of Lonomia are this toxic. Some of them seem to be urticating and painful, but not deadly. But others are so venomous as caterpillars that touching them can result in organ failure. Despite their deadly caterpillars, most Lonomia are harmless as moths. They are fluffy and cute and innocent and look like dead leaves. Uh oh, the sun is starting to come up. What does that mean? It means that the moth will st stop coming now, so we can slowly start to clean up the trap. It was a good night though, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, but this tiny and beautiful thing is in fact a Saturnid moth. Yep. A Saturni day. Let me tell you more about it. Cutie. Ooh, and here we have the male of one really incredible species of Saturnidae. Even though it's rather small, it's one of my favorites. This is Cheroderfia vagans. Males of this species are common, although I've never seen a female before. If they're touched, they curl up into a ball and display their colorful abdomen in order to intimidate onlookers. Yes, they're colorful, but is meant to scare their enemies. As far as I can tell, pretty much nothing is known about their life cycle. Tonight, I'm just collecting dozens and dozens of species with unknown life cycles. Hopefully, I can return to Brazil and breed some of these species. I can't believe so little is known about so many species. Cheroderfia vagans is found in Brazil and Argentina. It's endemic only to the Atlantic rainforest. Hey, wow, look at this. It is a green colored tiger moth. So bright and beautiful. So what species is this? It seems to be, I think, Phaloe cruenta. According to my data, this species is found in Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia and Uruguay. It seems the caterpillars of this species feed on Heliotropum, Eupatorium and Artemisia species. Some of these plants are toxic, making the caterpillars, and perhaps the moths, toxic too in the process. They store the plant toxins inside their bodies and use them to their own advantage. Sorry for manhandling the moth a little, but I need to have a good look at its forewings for an accurate species determination. If you study moths, sometimes it's necessary to grab them. Don't worry though, the moth is completely unharmed. Its colors are a warning to predators. Don't eat me or you're going to have a nasty stomach ache. Yes, presumably they are toxic. All right. It's morning. Let's turn off the light and go to sleep. Tomorrow. There's another day with many insects. In the morning you have to be very careful because the wasps, they like to make a cluster like this on the sheet. And it's actually kind of dangerous if you walk into it. These wasps do not mess around. 
I hope they go away. Nasty, nasty creatures, eh? But still important for the environment, I guess. Yep, when the sun is coming up. That's when entomologists go to bed. I hope you enjoyed. Good night. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Entomology is such a weird profession. You work at night and sleep during the day. At least if you're into moths like I am, that is. So, the night is over, the sun is coming up, that means I'm gonna sleep now. Good night. It was a nice night, we had a nice number of Sauternid. What I found really strange though is that we had absolutely zero hawk moths for some reason. I don't understand. Actually, I think this is the first night in Brazil that I didn't have any hawk moth. Usually they tend to be much more numerous than a silk moth for some reason, I don't know why. Must be something in the environment. I mean, you do have different results every day, so maybe if I moth trap another time, maybe I will find more hog moths tomorrow. I'm gonna go sleep now. Uh, bye everyone. Don't miss the next video. I'm going to make a very special video about butterflies. You don't want to miss it. The butterflies here are spectacular. Good night. Veronica, what are you doing to me? Is this a dream? I thought you friend zoned me. Oh wait, I, I must be asleep right now. That's what's going on. So while I'm sleeping, let me show you some of the beautiful surroundings. Laying one egg at a Did time. Did you know that you can go here as well if you want to? I'm currently staying in a tourist lodge in Brazil and its name is Itororo. They even have their own website and everybody can come here and have their own holiday in the mountains. Yes, you dear viewer, if you are watching this video right now, you can come here too as a tourist. This is a special ecological lodge for bird watchers or people who study orchids and insects. It has many native species to photograph. I'm staying here for a few days to document local moth species. I'm sleeping right now though because I mostly work at night and sleep during the days. That's the life of a moth trapper for ya. I'm going to moth trap a second night though, in the very same video. Are there any more announcements before we move on? Hmm, I think I know one. I'm going to post a lot of special pictures soon on my Instagram account. Follow my Instagram if you want a lot of moth pictures soon. I want more Instagram followers this year. Okay, that was it. Anyway, I think it's time to get started for the second night once again. Are you ready? Let's even play a second intro to truly make it feel like two, uh, two episodes in one. My name is Bart Coppens and you may know me from YouTube. And the lighting is terrible, I'm like a silhouette. Well you guys know how it works. Let me change the lighting, now you can see my face a little bit better. I am in the country of Brazil, in the Atlantic 
rainforest in the area of Nova Friburgo and I'm in a mountainous area I think the altitude here is over a thousand meters so it's a little bit cold and chilly um, high elevation is always a little bit colder and you get different species of moths now I'm somebody who studies moths and I'm trying to attract them with this insect trap I made here and you know how this works I take the most interesting moths I find and I make close-ups of them this is a special light bulb a mercury vapor light bulb and they attract a lot of insects it's the light in particular I have to be careful because it attracts wasps too and I don't want to get stung by those but take a look at some of the beautiful moths that will come to the light here at night it's just this Pantheroides that's fantastic isn't it it's a lot of moths and we even have the first cool little Saturnid of the night let's get started and let me show you some of the moths that I found oh we got ourselves a very cute one that was just attracted to the light I'm gonna make a close-up of this one in a few seconds wow Oh look, it's this species again. We've seen it in some of my earlier videos. This is what I think is this species Australipa cruenta. One of the native food plants of this moth appears to be Ilex paraguayensis, the same plant that is used to make mate tea. Have you heard about yerba mate before? I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. After that, they can also feed on a number of Fabacea type plants according to the literature such as Albizia. Interesting. They have two beautiful and cute eye spots on their hind wings with a beautiful red color surrounding them. It's as if they are shy and blushing, isn't it? Fascinating little insect. Look at this miraculous little creature. Australipa cruenta is found in southeastern Brazil, northeastern Argentina and Paraguay. In Brazil, there are two species of Australipa and to be honest, it's kind of difficult to tell them apart. I'm trying to do my best. Oh, it's the same species again. We saw it already yesterday. Even though it's small, it's one of my favorites. This is Gerodervia vagans. Gerodervia vagans is found in Brazil and Argentina. It's endemic to the Atlantic rainforest only. It's rather small and adorable too anyway. Let's move on because you've already seen this species before. I did just found one more giant silk moth here on the floor. Oh, oh no. It's large. It's large. Hmm, yes, moths. 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 Well, look who we have here. It's our old friend Procetironia principalis. Remember when we caught it before in some previous videos? This species is exclusively found in southeastern Brazil. Here they fly on higher altitudes in the mountains and their caterpillars exclusively feed on croton in the wild, a plant from the Spurge family. Males are common at the light in the mountains of Rio de Janeiro state. Females are a little bit more rare. This specimen is a male. This species is found in southeastern Brazil only. It's one of those species that's endemic to this particular region. What moths do I want to take for a close-up? 
We have to be a little bit selective because there's too many of them to film in one day. Oh, this is a very nice one. I think this one I have not done on my YouTube channel yet. And also here on the bottom I see something interesting. A species of hog moth. In fact, there's two hog moths here. I think this is a species I haven't filmed yet, so I will take them to make a YouTube close-up. That's what we want to close up. Good. Yesterday I didn't get any hog moth, so I'm happy to have them. Here I also see a very nice one for the close up. This is fantastic. Oh, as you can see, it has transparent wings. That's unique and beautiful. I have not seen this before in a tiger moth. This species definitely deserves to have its close up on my channel. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm taking this. Oh, this one I want. Oh, this is a very nice one. Yes, this is a beautiful tiger moth. Ladies and gentlemen, so what is it that I do when I get a moth that I'm interested in? Well, I'm doing a digitalization project combine science and social media, have your special light ring. I put a moth here on a cutting board on this background so you can see the scale of the insect pretty well. Then I use my camera. Yes, to make close-ups. Let me show you what it looks like. Another day, another moth species on the YouTube channel of the sexy moth king Bart Coppens. Let me tell you about this species of sphingidae or hog moth that I just found in Brazil. These small hog moths are what I assume to be Xylophanus porcus. This one is actually difficult to identify. There's at least five different species in Brazil that look similar. It seems to have a large distribution, all the way from southern Brazil to north Cuba to even south Florida in the United States of America. The host plant appears to be Palicorea handiflora in the madder family, the Rubiaceae. But also other Rubiaceae, such as Psychotria or Hamelia, are used as host plants. If you disagree with my idea, then leave a comment. In Brazil there are many species of hog moths. In fact there are over 200 species. That's crazy, huh? Hog moths are important for the environment as prey for insectivores and sometimes even as pollinators. I'm not even sure what this is, but it seems to be a kind of a Crambidae species. Crambidae in the tropics can have interesting postures like these. I have yet to determine the species. If you recognize the species, then please leave a comment. It would help my research if you could identify it. To me, it is still difficult to find out its identity. Wow! Now this right here is a very remarkable tiger moth. I would identify it as a Symphlebia fulminans. The bright yellow and orange colors combined give it a bright and fiery appearance. Symphlebia can be difficult to identify in some instances, since there are over 56 described species of them. As far as I can see in the record, this particular species is only found in Brazil so far. Curiously, very little information is known about her distribution and life cycle. Why am I not surprised? 
Planet Earth is full of amazing, colorful, fascinating and important creatures that contribute to the environment in their own unique ways. And about most of them we don't know anything, which is a shame because ignorance of their biology is an existential threat to insects and their conservation. That is why my channel exists. Here comes a large moth. Let's hope it is sufficiently attracted to the light. Looks like a large hawk moth of some kind. Hmm. Now it's over here. Yep. See those eyes? That's a huge moth. Ooh la la! Now that is a beauty of a hawk moth. Ooh la la! Now that is a beauty of a hawk moth. Fantastic! What a nice species. And what's even cooler is it has bright colored underwings. Look at that! Fantastic! Oh no, this is a nice catch. A big uh, fat hog moths. That's what I like. Large hog moths are always impressive and sometimes they can be unexpectedly colorful. So this, I suspect, is Ademarias eurystenus and it is found in Colombia, Peru, Paraguay and Brazil. And perhaps more countries too. Caterpillars, they seem to feed on several plants from the Lauraceae or the Laurel family. In the rainforest, this includes, for example, Ocotea, but also Avocado from the genus Persia and more plants. Wow, I love hog moth, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely marvelous to be here in the rainforest. And it is all thanks to you, my viewers, that I am here in Brazil. You know what would be fun? If I was able to travel the world and show you insects in every rainforest. Imagine the cool species of hog moths, silt moths and other types that we will encounter if that were to happen. The channel needs to grow a little bit bigger for me to afford doing stuff like that, but who knows? Just admire this beautiful Ademarius, however. Fantastic. Beautiful hog moths. Now some of you guys are going to wonder, why Bart? Why, 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 why? Why are you going to, why are you doing so much effort just to make a few pictures and videos of moths? Well, I'm in the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil and I came all the way from Europe, the Netherlands, all the way to Brazil to do this. I've always been fascinated by tropical butterflies and moths. And the truth is that the moths and butterflies in this area of the world are poorly documented. I'm doing this also to help with a conservation project. It's called Regua. And I am traveling basically in the area of Novo Friburgo, which is a city in Brazil, Cachoeiras de Macaco and Guapiatsu. These names probably don't mean much to most of you, but if you live in Brazil, in this area, You'll know what places I mean. And I'm traveling here, attracting moths with the light, and I'm digitalizing them. Then I will make a list of all the species I find here, of particular families that I study, such as the Saturnidae. But also if I see interesting hog moths, tiger moths, or anything else. I will compile it into a list, try to identify everything. And sometimes you get new records, of records of very rare things, or things that are 
hardly documented. This data I'm sharing with a team of professional entomologists at Regua. Um, this data will help us understand their distribution more, their flight time. Second of all, the pictures and videos I make here are educational videos. Uh, it will get more people interested in insects. Insects are declining, insects are in trouble, insects need conservation and help. More people need to study insects. They are very important for the environment. And because of the human influence on the environment, they are being degraded. Species are declining and going extinct. And that's a shame. So by showing you their beauty on social media, I also hope to convince some people of their beauty. So my project it combines science and social media, also by making social media video like this one that will educate people about my work, what I do here in this area. So it's an interesting project, even if I say so myself, because I'm the one doing it. So it's easy for me to call it interesting. But um, yeah, it has some aspects between education, uh, social media, showing people on social media, YouTube, Instagram, how beautiful these animals are, while at the same time collecting data. I've always wanted to make a difference for the environment. I always want to help nature, do research and biology. And finally, my dream has come true here in Brazil. I'm very happy and grateful for that. I also want to remind you guys, my YouTube channel is totally and entirely demonetized by YouTube. If I upload a video, I don't make a single dollar, okay? And the only reason I can do all of this is because of donations. In fact, let's say that there was a few fans. Let's keep it vague. You know who you are, you know what you did for me. You're probably watching right now. Um, who helped me go here to Brazil. Everything that I do here is crowdfunded by my fans. Uh, the flight tickets, my stay here was basically all paid for by my loyal fans. I'm not saying this to brag about money and say, haha, I'm such a successful YouTuber, I can do this. No, it's because I wanted to realize without donations and your help, this video would not be here. This research would not be here. Me contributing to the conservation of the Atlantic rainforest would not be happening right now. So it's you guys making this stuff happen. Don't you ever forget that. And if you like my show, consider contributing because it's the only way I can do really cool stuff like this. I have the time to do it. I have the energy to do it, but not the budget. And that's what people help me with on YouTube. So this is just some background information. Let's go back to the moths. Interesting, interesting. Moths don't get enough attention. You know, everybody loves butterflies, but no, not many people care about moths. That's a shame. So, thankfully, Bart Coppens is here with his channel. Oh, this looks like a female of a Saturnid. This is the family that I study. Whoa. Well, definitely going to make a video and a photo of this one. Oh hey, this Saturnidae silk moth is new to my channel. I believe this species is Oiticella brevis. The caterpillars of this moth feed on mimosa and acacia. This species is endemic to eastern Brazil, or so it seems. Moths from the higher elevations are darker and greyer than the brown moths found at lower elevations. It's said there are up to three generations a year of this insect in the wild. At this point I've been moth trapping in Brazil for over a month and I'm still frequently getting species that didn't show up before. Fantastic! I hope you're enjoying the video as much as I enjoy making it.
Now here there's some umbrellas and walking sticks, but uh, I just noticed a huge Saturnid landed on it. I think we recognize this Saturnid, don't we? Yesterday we had the same species. Gonna make a close-up of it soon anyway. Just to show you the size, it's a decent Saturnid, eh? Isn't it? Decent size. Oh look, it's this species again. It makes sense that we encounter some species twice, because the second night I'm moth trapping in the same location. This silk moth is identified by, my, by me as Lonomia antoniae. Pretty much nothing is known about this species of moth. Not the caterpillars, not the life cycle, not the fly time and not its distribution. Almost nothing is known about it. For a Lonomia species it's actually quite big. Some males have wingspans up to 10 cm. This species is much bigger than all the other Lonomia that I have seen before. Beautiful. Ooh. Very fascinating, eh? I don't have the time and energy to make a close-up of all the moths here. So I'm just going over some of them really fast. Let's cram it. Some very nice and colorful geometrids. It's always nice to see. In the bushes I found a caterpillar. This is the caterpillar of the silk moth Automeris beccheri. Caterpillars of this species seem to be common on a great number of plants. I found them on banana palm tree. This species is found in southeastern Brazil and possibly Peru. Don't touch it though, it's toxic and it has a painful toxic sting. Why am I toxic?
and the sun is coming up in the mountains in Brazil. Good morning, Brazil! So that means that I'm gonna, I'm already cleaning up the trap. That was the end of it. We had some cool and colorful stuff. Mm hmm. All right. Interesting. It was just a very simple night of documenting moths. Nothing out of the ordinary, I guess, when it comes to my videos. I mean, I document moths. It's, it's literally my work. What did you expect? And that's what we did. Hope you enjoyed my commentary and some of the close-ups. And tomorrow night I'm going to do it again. So then there's going to be another video of me showing you cool moths. That's right, folks. See you then. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So where was all of this filmed? I am currently in the area of Novo Friburgo in Brazil, residing in a guest house known as Itororo. Let me tell you more about this place and its surroundings. Itororo is a guest house in a mountainous location. I think the altitude is about 1000 meters. It is very welcoming to tourist guests but also researchers who like the environment such as I. Also interesting here are the bird feeders that contain fruit that uh, attract a variety of birds and wildlife. There's also hummingbird feeders that attract hummingbirds. So if you visit Itororo you're guaranteed to see cool stuff. Let me show you some of the stuff I've seen here on the feeders. Hey man, good luck, huh? Thank you. We got them out. I'm glad to start. Obrigado, parabéns. Obrigado a vocês, gente. O que é isso daqui? Isso é para caminhada. Eu acho que isso é para caminhada. Dá para você para botar no YouTube. Isso é 
aqui para caminhar. Você se vira aqui ó, e apoia no chão. Entendeu? Isso aqui é um copo? Você não vê aqui é dourado, dourado, uhum. dourado. E ele mostra só quando ele quer. É porque agora ele está disposto para ele. Olha só quando chega é. perto dele. E se você vem para Itororo, você, seus amigos e sua família, podem claim uma dessas casas para você. Be surrounded by wildlife in the mountains. Don't believe me? Let me show you the view. All I have to do is turn the camera around from the porch and show you the wonderful view here. Honestly, let me ask you a question. Who wouldn't want to have a vacation in a place like this? Wow. And this is why I decided to come to Itororo. My interest is butterflies and moths and this place is thriving with rare and unusual species. Let me show you some of the species I found here at Itororo. It will blow your mind. Talking, I'm talking to the camera for a second, okay? Yeah, okay. And this is the area where you can have your drinks or dinner. It kind of looks like a German cottage, doesn't it? Because of the high altitude, the climate here is a little bit cooler and more comfortable for foreigners like me. So that's a very interesting. But the coolest thing about Itororo is that they use the money they make from tourists for conservation of the land. This whole area is being reforested and conserved. Thanks to the Itororo project and the tourists that come here. The tourism here brings the money and the money funds more conservation of land. You can visit this place too if you want and book a vacation here. Just go to their website. It's called Eco Lodge Itororo and everyone can join and book a holiday here. Tourists here are in fact very welcome. If you go to Itororo you are absolutely guaranteed to see cool wildlife. Entomology is such a weird profession. You work at night and sleep during the day. Makes no sense. It's basically the opposite of normal if you were into moths. But then again, if you like moths, are you really normal? I think not. I think you're crazy, but in a good way. Hey, good night, folks. Wish you all the best. See you next video. Don't miss it. I'm going to make a very special video about butterflies. <sighs> it's time to go to sleep. And moth trap another night. You'll see that in the next episode. Mom, please, no, don't take my subscribers away. Without followers, I'm a loser. An utter nobody, please. It's the only thing I have. Oh, wait, this is a dream again, isn't it? Well, I'm glad that you're still here watching this. It means that you enjoyed my video. As a YouTuber, that's the best thing that could happen to me. Somebody enjoying my videos, yay! What was your favorite species of insect? 
leave it in the comments. Did you see any species that blew your mind? Here is a spoiler for next time, because in the next episode I'm going to moth trap another time in a location on top of a hill. And oh boy oh boy, the moths I found that night were enormous and very unusual. So do stay tuned for the next moth trapping episode. I'm in the process of making many of them. There is more good news too, because I will return to Brazil next year and try to breed moths inside Brazil. That's right, I'm going to try and breed moths and breed some of the species that you can see in this video in captivity. Which species should I breed first? Leave a comment if you have a suggestion. If you like my show and you enjoyed my video, then please keep in mind that my YouTube channel is demonetized by YouTube. I run this show exclusively with the tips and donations of my viewers. Now guys, there is currently an economic recession and many people in the world struggle to pay their bills or struggle to take care of themselves. And I am certainly not entitled to anything, just for making videos that people enjoy. This message is only for people who are willing and able. But if you like my show, consider tipping or donating. Traveling to Brazil and other countries just to film cool insects is really expensive and time consuming. And YouTube permanently demonetized my channel. I don't make any money from my videos beyond what people donate. And that makes it really hard for me to make an entertaining show. It's possible to donate via PayPal or buy a subscription on Patreon or pledge on other websites such as Ko-Fi. It's the crowdfunding that keeps this channel going and that makes the sexy Moth King more powerful. Last but not least, today, today I am in a nature lodge called Itoro and everybody can visit this place and book a vacation here. And so can you. Just go to Brazil and book one of their lodges to see wildlife. If we reach the $700 goal on Patreon, I will do a United States of America tour. I don't know if we were ever, will ever reach this goal because it's far away, but who knows, the channel is growing. If many people join, it could happen and I would moth trap in the United States and show you some of the native species of moth there. Do you think that's interesting? Then consider supporting me on Patreon. It also helps the survival of this demonetized channel. 